Welcome back AP staff students. So in preparation for the 2020 AP stats exam, uh, I'm going to try to show you the same way I would upload. I'm going to type my response and that typed response I would copy paste to uh, the form uh, the form that they provide. Uh, it's not ideal, but you know that's just we're going to practice that. So looking at 2018 number four, this problem combines um, chapter three, which is experiment or um, data collection. So experimental design, observation, study. With um, it does look like there's a um, inferencing problem here uh, to sample mean difference in sample means. So um, it's going to have quite a bit of review here. So this is going to be good. Uh, so what I would do is read this carefully, pause the video and read this. Really, you should spend at least two or three minutes reading multiple times and making sure that you know fully what is required before starting in on any part of it. OK, welcome back. Now, this says, based on the design of the study, study to some students implies it's observational study. That's incorrect. Let's not fall for that trick. Um, it is an experiment, and that is because they are forcing a condition in one variable, namely which surgery they're going to be getting, the new or the standard. And they're trying to note a response in another variable, which in this case looks like the recovery time. Okay. Now, so that makes it uh, an experiment. Basically, what they're asking is if we do get a statistically significant result, would you recommend um, that the medical center concludes that it's due to the different procedure? And, you know, that's going to be up for our uh, up for debate. Now, <clears throat> our job is to show the score that we have course content knowledge. So before we answer yes or no, let's just express what's required for a well-designed experiment to then be used to make decisions later. So it's really asking, uh, is this a well-designed experiment? Part A. Um, basically, a well-designed experiment re requires three main um, ideas. First, proper controls are in place. Okay, so this is conditions that for all so that uh, confounding the impact or the effect is minimized. Okay, on the results. So the next is uh, the R's. So randomization, yes. Okay, that is met. I'm not actually sure the controls were met, so I didn't say anything there. Uh, but I do know randomization was met um, in the context. It did say that the treatment patients received. randomized. That was between what the new and the standard uh, surgical procedure, I think. Okay, three was replication or is replication. I believe this is met. Uh, both sample, uh, both treatments at a uh, sufficient number of subjects, both greater than 30. 
Uh, one was 100, one was 110. 30 is kind of your standard, um, so they were plenty. All right, controls, we're not sure that they were met. Okay. So let's see. Um, it was never mentioned how variables that might impact recovery time were controlled. Uh, I might say rest, um, maybe even physical therapy. Okay. So here's basically what I first did before I answered the question is I demonstrated to whoever is scoring my paper that I do have content knowledge on what a well-designed experiment requires and the fact that you need a well-designed experiment to suggest a difference in procedures, um, you know, in this kind of situation. So even if the data suggests a statistically significant difference, you still have to have a well-designed experiment. Otherwise, um, you could be basing decisions on, you know, on the wrong data. So what I'm going to recommend is, since we are not sure if proper controls were in place, really cannot recommend say, well, we can't say, we cannot say um, that the procedure uh, has any effect on recovery time. Now, we will still carry out the rest of the procedure. We will still do what it says in the rest of the problem, but we should put a disclaimer on any results. Okay, yes, statistically significant was found. However, uh, we have to go back and make sure controls were in place. And if they're not, we can't really say anything. All right, so part B, I believe, talks about, about that. Let's see, what does it say for part B? And do the data provide convincing statistical evidence? All right, so they want several parts. Um, first, so this is basically a hypothesis test. All right, so this is a hypothesis test. Let's see, it's going to be a two sample difference in population. Sample difference in population mean. Okay, so the two different means would be, uh, let's see. Um, okay, so the null hypothesis is that the difference in mean recovery time difference in mean recovery time for let's see the standard search procedure and new surgical is zero. Um, and then we'll say is it better to New, less recovery time. Okay. So we want to actually want to test for less. So the null is that the, the difference in recovery time is zero. Okay. Alternative.
So since I'm going to go uh, standard takeaway new, if it's net, uh, I'll see, yeah. If I subtract the standard and the new, uh, it should be significantly less. Okay, so that's what we're going to look for. Now, go look at your standardized uh, test statistic from the formula sheet. Uh, let's see, same questions. Where is that? Formula sheet, uh, mean, oh, back up here. So formulas, standardized test statistic. The parameter is going to be zero. The statistic is going to be the difference in sample means. And the standard error of the statistic we'll go look at. Let's see. Um, that's uh, parameters. There it is. Okay, so we want this one here, and we're probably going to have to be stuck with a sample. So it's going to be that one right there. So that's going to be our procedure. You're going to see me do this. I'm going to try to do a quick over on the other paper. Find that. All right. So first, let's go with standard error. It's going to be, I'm going to go through this pretty fast. Let's see, uh, 34. So what it's going to be is square root of 34 squared for 110 plus 29 squared over 100. Okay, so I'm just getting these standard error of the statistic. Okay. This is a standard deviation of okay. Now the standardized test statistic. It really should be a T, um, but it won't matter whether it's a T or a Z here. It should be the statistic minus parameter. And then put that in parentheses. So when we're typing, we have to do it a certain way over the standard of the statistic. Okay, so the statistic is going to be <laughs> so subtract the sample means, get negative 31. Take away zero. So the difference is supposed to be zero. And I'm getting a standard error in 4.350. When I get that, it's a negative 7.13. Now, the T value is the probability that a T is less than negative 7.13. Of that, it doesn't even need to be calculated. It's going to be less than 0 0.001. So basically, when you do that in your calculator, you're going to get, you know, something times e to the negative, whatever. We know what we converted in class was anytime we get e to the negative fourth, fifth, sixth, whatever, we just have to state that it's less than 0 0.001. Okay. Now, so. Um, we're going to go back up and talk about some other things. So I did the null and alternative. I did the mechanics. I'm going to come down and interpret this. Okay, so interpret the t-value. I definitely forgot a step, but we'll go back up and do it. All right. Interpret p-value. We always have to do this. P-value. Less than the point. 001 means that this is the likelihood of observing a difference in 
sample means as extreme or more extreme than the one we did under the assumption that the null hypothesis is true. Now, okay, since this p value less than point zero zero one. could say there is a significant um, decrease in recovery time in this group from, uh, from these samples. Those received the new surgical procedure and the standard. Okay. Now I never mentioned the conditions necessary for um, inferencing to be reliable. Now that's different than this. So we address the idea of well de designed experiment so that if there was something that was statistically significant, we could recommend it. So that's two, two separate ideas. So these conditions have to be added conditions for inference uh, necessary okay so first has to be the unbiased data so was this a simple Simple random sample. Was this a simple random sample of all subjects that need um, a surgery to repair a torn? ACL. Not that. Okay. Why? Because we just took probably, it didn't look like that, you know, they took a simple random sample of all of them. Uh, also, it doesn't look like it met, was met up here. However, we'll still run the, you know, we'll still run the test. You know, we shouldn't just stop because one of the conditions isn't met. Um, the researcher might disagree with us on this or sorry the score so if we stop right here well hey it's not that so let's stop right there and we can't go on well we still want to demonstrate our course knowledge okay so if we disagree here i still ran my mechanics i still wrote my known alternative hypothesis you know maybe i don't get a four but at least i get a three okay so the first condition necessary for inference is we need unbiased data Usually that's met by a simple random sample. Who knows? Okay, maybe that's not, not met. Then now, um, the sampling distribution uh, is close enough to the statistical model. In this case, a t distribution. T or z doesn't make any difference to be used to explain sampling error. Now that's just the difference in, um, if I took different samples, 
you know, every sample is going to come up with a different mean. Uh, that's natural. So that sampling error, it's not something we did wrong. So make sure we know the difference between that. Uh, now, for this, since sample size is large for both of them, um, let's see. So there's two things. It looks like they were independent samples, okay? Independent samples appears to be met. So when you have two samples, make sure they're independent samples. That's going to be one of the conditions. Uh, actually, that's, I'm sorry, that's unbiased data part. Really sorry. That has nothing to do with the model. That should be up here. So it was a simple random sample. Uh, were these independent? Independent seems to be Matt. Not sure about the sample of all. All right, back to here. Sorry about that. Now, the sampling distribution is more about just the sample size being large enough. So, both samples were far above the 30. So, uh, central limit theorem. will make sampling distribution close enough to the t-distribution or even normal if we need it. Okay, so that part's met. We're not sure about the other one. So that makes us put a disclaimer on it. No biggie, all right? All this is pretty close. This is going to be at least a three and most... I would bet most scores will give me a four on that. So that's how you should answer that question uh, to the best of your ability. I know I'm way over my time limit, uh, but I was explaining it. Try to get as much of that in the 15 minute mark as possible. The key is express your content knowledge and either and then answer the question or try to do it right within. Uh, that's essential on part A. Thanks so much for tuning in and good luck.